Hey there everyone, Taish here, back again with another video and in this video, we'll talk about interfaces in TypeScript. Now interfaces are pretty cool in TypeScript and yes, I would 100% agree, they sound exactly similar to type that we have already studied in the TypeScript. So they almost are identical and that is why it has required at least two or maybe three videos to finally understand where the interfaces are and why these are being so much used into the world of TypeScript. Now before we move forward, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as forward these uh, playlists entirely into your WhatsApp group, into your college group so that everybody can take advantage. That would be really, really beneficial for me and you, both of us. Let's move ahead and talk about interfaces. So let me take you on to my screen. We have created a new file, myinterface.ts. And yes, you'll find a lot of similarities between that. So yes, I do understand that part. And we'll take care of what is the differences between them, the versus part and all of that. But right now, let's go ahead and just talk about the interface. So yes, it starts with the keyword interface. And let's just say, let's try to assume a scenario. You're creating a new user. And this user has some of the properties like maybe uh, email, maybe a user ID, maybe there is a Google login, may maybe there is a database ID as well. And you are trying to start a trial for this user for whatever the services you are, you are actually selling. And also you want to give him some a discount code as well. So this much of the scenario will help us to get an entire overview of how things are going to be there. So I think that's a good scenario to understand the interfaces bit by bit and pieces by pieces. So moving further, let's just say we call this one as simply user. Feel free to call it whatever you like. And we have a user. So let's just say user starts with an email that is going to be a simple string. And we'll be saying that you should also have a user ID and that will be a number. All right. And yes, I do agree. You might be saying, hey, let's go ahead and create a type of this and then call this like that. And yep, that also exists and that also works. Uh, but we're not here for type. We'll go through with the differences between them in the next video. But right now, uh, let's just jump back into interface that yes. Now interface is more like a scenario or kind of a, like interface doesn't have those nitty gritty and details of how it will work. But these are basic overview of that whenever you're creating a user, these are the field which are compulsory. These are the methods which are compulsory. Now how you implement them, that is totally up to you. But Interface, yes, loosely you can say it's more like a class, but yeah, loose form of class, very broad overview, a very superficial view. It will ask you, it will force you that there should be a method, it, the name should be the same, but it doesn't say what should you do inside it. It just has a basic protocol things that, hey, this is, uh, I expect, this is what it's supposed to do. But it helps a lot in the code and especially in the long and really bulky code that this helps a lot. So let's try to create a user. So let's just say we create a user Hitesh and let's just define that, that this is going to be a type of user. As soon as I do this, this creates a problem that, hey, Hitesh should be a type of user. Empty parenthesis. Nope, that's not going to work because you are missing up uh, email and the user ID. So if I go ahead and say uh, email ID is going to be, let's just say h at the rate h.com. And of course, we need a user ID that will be 2211, whatever that is. Okay, this is great. This is really valid. Maybe let's just say user is also trying to log in from the Google and uh, he does have a Google ID. So we'll be saying Google ID, Google token, whatever that is. But I'm not sure. It might be not as compulsory. There is a uh, email and password login as well. So you can obviously use these fields, which we have used in the past as well. So this is now optional. You pass it, great. You don't pass it, nobody's going to stop you. And there are also read-only fields, which we have already seen in the past. So read-only can be something like a DB ID. So there is a database ID. You don't want to change it. It should be number. Uh, it's not optional. So obviously you have to fill it. So we're we are going to say that DB uh, ID and that one will be a number. So I'll be saying to do, yeah, that, that's a database ID. Now the advantage of the read-only is same as what we have studied in the past. Hope you have watched that video. So for example, if I go ahead and say email, that email is going to be, let's just say I changed my mind and I say it's going to be h at the rate hc.com. I wish I would have that domain. Uh, but if I go ahead and try to manipulate any of the read-only values, for example, dbid and change it from 2 to 3, 3, it's not allowed. You get the idea. This is really basics. We have seen this and done this in the past as well. Now, what makes interfaces really interesting is the definition of the functions. And there are a couple of ways how you actually define it. Let's start with the trial user. So we're going to say there is a start trial and you want to 
provide a method for that. So start trial. And there are a couple of ways how you define the method. The first one is the boring one. I don't like it much. Uh, second one I like more. So the first method is you define a name and then you say, hey, this is going to be a method. There can be a return type of void or string, whatever that is. Let's start with a string. So now, as soon as you create a user type of Hitesh, you need to provide a method here as well that needs to be there. So let's just go ahead and say start trial, something like this. And this needs to be a method that is compulsory. You cannot just go ahead and say, hey, four, because it's it's not allowed. It will pop you that, hey, whenever you are creating this, uh, this needs to be a function which returns uh, a string as well. So it's really easy to define that. So uh, what we can do is we can just go ahead, put up a colon and say, hey, this is going to be a method. And there we go. Now, only compulsory part onto us is to return a string. So we'll be saying something like uh, trial started. That's it. And that's pretty much it. That's all it is right now. And yes, of course, there could be more logic inside it. But this series is not about logic building. This is more about getting friendly with the TypeScript. Now, there is another way of doing this, which is something that I like more because it's much more clear to understand. I'll be saying, uh, let's just say trial. And what you can do in this one is you can just put a parenthesis just here. And this makes more clarity actually to me that this is not going to be anything. This is going to be always in method. And then after that, you define what type of data it is going to return. It might return nothing. It might return any uh, badly, any, but uh, you can just go ahead and say string. Now, if I go ahead and try to return something like two, it will say, hey, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that. You should be returning a string. So yeah, that is one of the way. This is my favorite way, but again, let me know in the comment section, which is your favorite way. Maybe you like it more. This is more something that is making sense to you. Now, last but not the least is remaining is the discount code. So let's just say user wants to get a coupon. So we're gonna say get coupon. These days it's a very sales tactic -y world. So get coupon and uh, coupon should have a name. So let's just say we are saying coupon name and that name is going to be in the string and the return type is going to be a number. Number. There we go. Now, obviously, we have to put up this method now, get coupon. And there is something really interesting in this one, uh, which TypeScript allows you to do is first, let's get coupon. And then again, this should be a method which is going to return a number. So let's just say we are going to go ahead and say return uh, 10 because you get a 10% off. Uh, but notice here, uh, right now you're saying, hey, you should take a parameter of string. Right now it's saying, hey, user.getCoupon. So it should be a method. So right now it's not popping us anything, but in, in technicality, you should be providing a name, which is a compulsory one. You should always get that. And I'm pretty sure uh, by doing a little bit of the tweak settings and stuff, it will yell at us. Now, interestingly, you should always provide a coupon name. And let me show you something interesting. I can just go ahead and say name, and then I can provide uh, something like this. There we go, Hitesh 10, something like this. And this is allowed. This is totally allowed. You don't need to match this name with whatever the name you are providing. It is just a reference that, hey, you are providing a coupon name, which should be a string and you should always provide that. That is the whole idea. You can go ahead and provide a value as well, which should be a number. And now it is expecting that there should be two values that you should pass on here. Now, right now it is uh, not giving you anything, but you can just go ahead and say off. And if I go ahead and try to put up uh, something like string like this, uh, notice here it says, hey, no, you're not allowed to do so. You can totally avoid it. Or if you're passing it up, let's just say you have to give a number. So that is 10 because it's a 10% off. So you get the idea that how this is being done. And again, uh, these are all compulsory parameters that we're passing on right now. And this gives a brief idea of how to define interface. Again, use cases always helps us to get things more readable. But again, interface is not done yet. We need to have a little bit more discussion about interface. You can easily get it confused with the types, but yes, these things makes it a little bit more powerful. And one thing to note here, one thing very important to note here, Start trial is a method which returns a string. It doesn't force me that how you are starting the trial. And it is also making me compulsory that whenever you're using this Hitesh, creating that, there should be a method start trial and it should return a string. No matter what logic you put up, I really don't care. So this interface is always like an, like an interface. Like for example, your operating system is an interface for hardware. It doesn't allow you that when you click a button, how does it happen? You don't know and you don't care about it. You just know if I click on this, something happens. If I double click on a folder, it opens up. How it does behind the scene, what methods are being called, you don't care. So that is an interface. And that is exactly the same interface in the TypeScript as well. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.